Bible Read Along, committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadalong.com Good Biblical Morning, and I think we are, I think we're working, I think we got the, uh, the audio, the video, everything's working. We are live on TikTok. Hello, the TikTok. We are live on Facebook. Hello, the Facebook. No. <laughs> I like to say the, the Googles, the Facebook, the YouTubes. Um, you add S's and you add thes, and it just makes you sound so much cooler or 30 years older. Either way, that's what I'm doing. So we are live on TikTok. We are live on Facebook. We are so glad that you are here with us is it a long one i'm so glad you guys are here with us today my wife just informed me it's a long chapter we don't prepare ahead of time we do this in real time reading scripture one chapter at a time hopefully sometimes it's half a chapter when it's really long but we read through the bible chapter by chapter trying to understand the context trying to understand the big picture of how everything points to jesus our lord and savior and then we try to find things if there are things to apply to our life for today so if you are interested in more of our videos go check out there bible read along Dot com go check it out we have over 500 videos chapter by chapter ready on facebook we have over 300 videos on youtube we have some podcasts ready i think there's about 60 on there now and we have um our website which has all sorts of stuff books for sale bible prayer course go check it out my name is daniel if we haven't met hello Hello, nice to meet you. I'm Daniel. I'm the founder of Bible Read Along. I'm here with my wife, Ashley, and our cat, Rosie. Should I flip the camera around so they can see see her hugging your neck? Um, our cat jumps in here every time. So she's up on the back of the chair right by Ashley's head. But uh, today we're reading 1 Kings chapter 8. And if you need, if you like to take notes and you want to improve your Bible listening, and understanding notes is a great way to do that check out the good more good biblical morning bible study notebooks these are just notebooks that you can fill in context keywords um all sorts of stuff there check it out because they're just a great tool it will help you if you are going how do i increase my knowledge of the bible notes is a great way and i encourage you to get one of those books from the website let's head over to our chat nobody has said hi in tiktok land yet but we do have a couple people here saying hi in facebook so let's go over there matthew baker in Kelowna, bc welcome we are so glad you're here ashley's in chat she's everywhere ashley's on tiktok facebook she's all over the place um and Tracy, good morning, Tracy. Welcome. We are so glad to have you guys here with us. And we have Jamie LeBlanc on TikTok. Welcome. Where are you from? Please let me know. Let's pray and get into the word. Today we are reading 1 Kings chapter 8. 1 Kings chapter 8. Josh Weeb, welcome. So glad you're here, brother. All right, let's pray. Let us pray. One of my favorite Elvis songs, by the way. If you've never heard it, look up Elvis, Let Us Pray. Let us pray together. Okay, Lord, thank you so much for a new day. Thank you for your word. We ask that, that you make us aware of your spirit right now in this place. Wherever we are, wherever we're hearing the word of God, reading the word of God, make your spirit aware. Make us aware of your spirit, rather. And Lord, I just pray that you change our hearts and minds. Make us Bible-based, Christ-centered, spirit-filled believers. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. If you're ready, here's what we do when we're ready for the word of God. If you are on Facebook, hit that thumbs up. Type in the chat, I'm ready. It says I have four new comments on Facebook. No, it's just being silly. Um, type in the chat, I'm ready. If you're ready on TikTok, hit that heart. Give even five, ten. Just tap it a few times and then say, I'm ready in the chat. And here we go. First Kings chapter eight. 
1 Kings chapter 8. We are reading from the NIV version. Solomon has built a temple. He's also built his palace. And today we are talking about the ark brought into the temple. Then King Solomon summoned, summoned into his presence at Jerusalem, the elders of Jerusalem. I love that because again, this shows Solomon's not trying to do this all on his own. He's surrounding himself with the right people for the right job. He has elders and leaders and boards, and he's working with people to accomplish the goals God has given him. We need people. Um, he summoned the elders and all the heads of the tribes and the chiefs of the Israelites' families, elders, heads, chiefs, to bring up the Ark of the Lord's Covenant from Zion, the city of David, Bethlehem into Jerusalem. All the Israelites came together to King Solomon at the time of the festival in the month of Ethanim, the seventh month. When all the elders of Israel had arrived, the priests took up the ark. They brought up the ark of the Lord and the tent of meeting and all the sacred furnishings in it. The priests and the Levites carried them. Now, what does this show us as well? We know from Exodus and Joshua, um, he's doing this right. It's the priests that are supposed to do it. There's a certain way to do it. They're bringing up this, the, ta the temple they've had, the tabernacle has been mobile for so long. It's been in the desert. They've been walking around with it, but now they're bringing it up. So who's bringing it up? Matthew asked the priests and the Levites. That's who's bringing it up to the new temple. Verse four, and they brought the ark of the Lord and the tent of meeting, all the sacred furnishings in it. The priests and the Levites carried them. And King Solomon and the entire assembly of Israel had that had gathered about him were before the ark, sacrificing so many sheep and cattle that they could not be recorded or counted. Again, remember David at one time, they tried to move it and they weren't doing sacrifices and somebody died because they were doing it wrong. So now, um, I don't know if I'm allowed to, somebody unalived, I think I have to say on the TikTok. So um, <laughs> <coughs> she shakes her head at me every time I say the TikTok. Um, so Solomon is doing it right. Now, what does this all mean? Again, this just shows us the holiness of God. And what is the symbol in this? Like, where do we find ourselves? Well, we don't always find ourselves in scripture. We are looking for Jesus in scripture. And so what do we know here? Well, Jesus is the ultimate sacrifice. They had to make sacrifice, the shedding of blood for um, the presence of God and the, the place of meeting to be established. Because of Jesus dying and rising again from the cross, his shed blood, we have access to the presence of God. Jesus is the sacrifice, but Jesus is also the presence. He's, you know, we're looking for Jesus in here. Verse six, we are in first Kings <laughs> eight, verse six. The priests then brought the Ark of the Lord's Covenant into its place in the inner sanctuary of the temple, the most holy place, and put it beneath the wings of the cherubim. The cherubim spread their wings over the place of the Ark and overshadowed the Ark and its carrying poles. These poles were so long that the ends could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from outside the holy place. And they are still there today when this was written by um, Samuel. I think it was Samuel that wrote First Kings. I'll have to look back and look again. There was nothing in the ark except the two stone tablets that Moses had placed in it at Horeb, Horeb where the Lord made a covenant with the Israelites after they came out of Egypt. So what's in the ark? Um, the Ten Commandments, the tablets that God wrote on. But the poles that stick out of the ark are so long, they're actually bigger than the holy place, that it's pushing up against the curtain. So from the outside of the holy place, the holy of holies, outside of the holy of holies in the holy place, the next outer area, you can see that the curtains are being pushed. But when it says... Um, 
These poles were so long, the ends could be seen from the holy place in front of the inner sanctuary, but not from outside the holy place. In other words, they're pushing the curtain, but they're not enough to come. It's not opening it yet. It's just enough. Like when somebody hides, you ever hid behind a curtain playing hide and seek and you go hide behind the curtains. You can see someone's shape there. You don't see the person, but you see their shape. Same thing with the poles. It's pushing it out, but not enough to open it or that you would see the poles from the outside. That's what that is saying. Verse 10, when the priests withdrew from the holy place, the cloud filled the temple and the priests could not perform their service because of the cloud for the glory of the Lord filled the temple. There's more in, about this in, I believe it's first Chronicles. Um, this is a amazing sign and wonder. The temple's finished. The, the, the law the Mo, of Moses was brought in, the Ten Commandments, the tablets was brought in, the Ark of the Covenant was brought in, everything's ready. And suddenly there is a cloud that fills the, there is a cloud that fills the temple. This is similar to Acts chapter 2, where they were praying and waiting and the sacrifice had been made and everything had been brought into place. Jesus had died and rose again. And suddenly there was the sound of a mighty rushing wind and fire above their heads. That was what's happening in Acts. In 1 Kings, when they're ready, a cloud actually filled the whole temple. This is something amazing to think about and to see. I can't wait till one day, I believe personally, and I don't really have a lot of biblical evidence for this. This is just my own wishful beliefs. Um, so warning, this might might not be accurate. Um, but I believe that when we get to heaven, we're going to spend eternity not only worshiping God. And I think there's tasks and jobs for us because he says um, in some scripture, he gave rulership over five cities and 10 cities and one city. And, you know, so I think there's tasks that we still do in heaven. We're not just sitting there. Um, you know, as little babies, hallelujah, hallelujah. That's, that's not heaven. Um, but then I actually believe that we are going to be able to see the Bible in like, eat like a holodeck, like as if you're in the middle of it, walking around and that you could say, I want to see the temple filled and I want to see, and it's going to, we're going to see it and we're going to walk around and be a part of it. And what's going to happen is it just brings more awe and more wonder and more reverence for God that we, for, we just go, wow, yes, God, holy, holy, holy. And we join the angels and the cherubim. And that's what I personally think could happen in heaven, that we get to see the Bible. We get to see God. We get to see different aspects of God. One, you know, we, anyways, I don't want to get into all of that, but I mean, could you imagine just seeing God's love? You could see God's love for thousands of years. And if he just showed you his love, his love, his love, we would be overwhelmed for thousands of years. And then he could say, now I want to show you my joy. And you see joy for thousands of years and you would be overwhelmed and fall more in love with God because of his joy, because that's how amazing God is. Welcome. We are so glad you are here. Um, I forgot your name. It means, oh no, I don't know. I'm not going to guess because I'm wrong. Let's keep going. We are in 1 Kings chapter 8. We'll get back to the Bible now, not just Daniel's thoughts. <laughs> then Solomon said, verse 12, the Lord has said that he would dwell in a dark cloud. I have indeed built a magnificent temple for you, a place for you to dwell forever. Now, Here's where he's wrong because God doesn't dwell in the temple forever. But anyways, um, while this, while the whole assembly of Israel was standing there, the king turned around and blessed them. Interesting little, little thing here. We encounter the presence of God and what does it do? We turn around and we give blessing to others. We encounter God, we bless others. We encounter God, we bless others. I'm often weary of when people encounter God. I had a real experience and it just makes them more angry, more bitter, more judgmental. I, I, I'm cautious because I think there's something that goes when we've been changed by God, we have to bring blessings to others. Good morning, Claire. So glad you have joined us today in the UK. We are glad to have you. Verse 
fifteen. What time is it over there? What time is it? My wife's wondering what time it is where you are. I think it's the middle of the afternoon. You're probably around three p.m. But let me know. What time is it where you are, Claire? Is there anyone else on Facebook I've missed? No, but we're glad you're here. If you're watching, say hi. First Kings chapter eight, verse fifteen. Then he said, "Praise be to the Lord, the God of Israel." who with his own hand has fulfilled what he has promised with his own mouth to my father David. For he said, 2.15, I was close. For he said, since the day I brought my people Israel out of Egypt, I have not chosen a city in any tribe of Israel to have a temple built so that my name might be there, but I have chosen David to rule my people of Israel. My father David had it in his heart to build a temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. But the Lord said to my father, you did well to have it in your heart to build a temple for my name. Nevertheless, you are not the one to build the temple, but your son, your own flesh and blood. He is the one who will build the temple for my name. I love this too, because again, sometimes we get a little weird where we go, God gave me a vision. I have to be the one to do it. And I have to, and I'm guilty of this, by the way, God, you know, you see a picture, you have an idea and you go, that's the Lord. And it's not that God speaks to you audibly. He can, but it's, that's rare. Um, but you know, there's a picture or an image or a thought or an idea that you have that you believe is the Lord and you line it up with scripture and you test it. But interesting that David had this thought and God said, you're not the one to do it. Somebody else's. Sometimes God gives us thoughts and ideas, and it's not always for us to do. He's just revealing his heart, his mind. But sometimes it's for other people, and we have to train them, equip them. Or we have to work with them to, to do the things that God has called us to do. Little side note there. Verse 20. Verse 20. Verse 20. 1 Kings 8, verse 20. Then the Lord kept his promise he made. I have succeeded, David, my father. Now I sit on the throne of Israel, just as the Lord promised. God always keeps his promises. And I have built the temple for the name of the Lord, the God of Israel. I have provided a place for there for the ark in which the covenant of the Lord that he made with our ancestors when he brought them out of Egypt. Solomon's prayer of dedication. How much is this section? long are we gonna get to it right now we're gonna wait oh we got time we're still early let's go let's go solomon's prayer of dedication sorry i sniffed stuff there i'm stuffed up today um solomon's prayer of dedication first kings 8 verse 22 then Solomon stood before the altar of the Lord in front of the whole assembly of Israel. He spread out his hands towards heaven and he said, Lord, the God of Israel, there is no God like you in heaven above or on the earth below. You who keep your covenant of love with your servants, who continue wholeheartedly in your way, you have kept your promise to your servant David, my father, with your mouth you have promised with your hand you have delivered it as today. Now, Lord, the God of Israel, keep for your servant David, my father, the promise you made to him when you said you shall never fail to have successor to sit before me on the throne. Now, that was not actually, it was talking about his kids, but it was actually talking about, the prophecy is actually talking about Jesus that Jesus will be established as the king of all kings. There will not be any other kings after him from the line of David because he is the king that will be on the throne forever. King Jesus. So, you'll have a, uh, never fail to have a successor to sit before me on the throne of Israel. If only your descendants are careful in all they do, if, conditional phrase, you will always have someone before me if... If that's where it's talking about flesh and blood now, because Jesus did fulfill this. If only your descendants are careful in all 
they do to walk before me faithfully as you have. And now, God of Israel, let your word that you promised your servant David, my father, come true. Interesting here. We adore you, God. We confess that we need to be right and stay on the right path. We give thanksgiving. We give, anyways, this sounds a lot like the, oops, sorry, microphone, acts of prayer, adoration, confession, thanksgiving, supplication, free prayer course still available on YouTube. Okay, let's keep going. Sales pitch over. What verse are we on? Verse 27, 1 Kings 8, 27. But, God, but will God really dwell on earth? You're so big, God, you're so amazing, and we made this temple for you, but will God dwell on the earth? The heavens, even the highest heavens, cannot contain you. How much less this temple I have built? A confession. This is, I've brought all I have, and it's still not good enough. Yet, Emmett, can you turn that down? Sorry. Yet give attention to your servant's prayer and his plea for mercy. Confession. Lord, my God, hear the cry and the prayer that your servant is praying in your presence this day. May your eyes be open toward this temple night and day, this place of which you said, my name shall be there so that you will hear the prayer your servant pray, prays towards this place. Hear the supplication, our needs, of your servant and your people Israel when they pray toward this place. Hear from heaven, your dwelling place. And when you hear, forgive, confession. When anyone wrongs their neighbor and is required to take an oath and they come and swear the oath before you in the altar of this temple, then hear from heaven and act. Judge between your servants, condemning the guilty by bringing down on their heads what they have done and vindicating the innocent by treating them in accordance with their innocence. When your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you. Interesting here that, again, they know the history. They've, they've, they're well trained. They've memorized even the Torah at this point, the first five books of the Bible. Um, they are, you know, they've memorized these things. They know them by, by reciting them over and over. They know that when Israel sinned, they fall into captivity and they become defeated. Sin leads to defeat. We are forgiven by Jesus. All sins are forgiven on the cross. But now we want to begin to have God change us. So that we live out a life that goes, God, I want my life to please you. And I can't do it in my own strength. I can't do it in my own way. I need you, God. But I would rather be in repentance than in defeat. When your people Israel have been defeated by an enemy because they have sinned against you. And when they turn their back to you and give praise to your name, praying and making supplication to you in this temple, then hear from heaven, forgive their sins, bring them back to the land you gave to their ancestors. Verse 35, when the heavens are shut up and there is no rain because your people have sinned against you, and when they pray towards this place and give praise to your name and turn from their sin because you have afflicted them, then hear from heaven and forgive, of, forgive the sin of your servants, your people Israel. Teach them the right way to live and send rain on the land that you gave your people as an inheritance. Verse 37, when famine or plague comes to the land, does this sound like today a little bit? Um, there's nothing new. This has all been done before. And so what does this show us? Well, it's really just telling us to keep turning back to God. Absolutely. 100%. Ashley just nailed it. We just keep turning back to God. Well, Lord, there's, I'm captive. I'm defeated. I'm, there's, there's oppression. There's, there's global issues. There is, um, welcome, faithful, fun, and fat. We are glad you are here. Um, there is, my people, <laughs> my people are here. Um, there is, um, you know, when famines come, when disasters come, when storms come, all of these things can be used 
They're not sent by God, not always, um, but they are because we live in a fallen, sinful world. But but they can be used to turn us back to the Lord. Just as Solomon is saying to turn people back to the temple, we turn back to Jesus, his death, his burial, his resurrection. We turn when we are defeated. We turn when storms come because that is the only way that we are going to see the blessing of God come. Verse 37, when famine or plague comes to the land or blight or mildew, locusts or grasshoppers, or when an enemy besieges them and in any of their cities, whatever disaster or disease may come. And when a prayer or plea is made by anyone among your people, Israel, being aware of their afflictions, the affliction of their own heart, confession, and honest confession, and spreading out their hand towards this temple. I need help. Then hear from heaven, your dwelling place, forgive and act. Deal with everyone according to all they do, since you know their hearts, for you alone know every human heart. So they will fear you all the time they live in the land you gave your ancestors. Now, what is this fear? This fear is not a, I'm afraid. Um, this is, this is a awe and a reverence of God. And so no matter what comes, welcome blue, no matter what comes, famine, pestilence, disease. We've seen a lot of this, even in the last few years, natural disasters, wars, taking cities, all of these things. What is the, what is the goal of them? To point us back to God's dwelling place, which now is found in Jesus Christ. That we, we, are, we, we get pointed back to the cross, to Jesus, his death, burial, resurrection. And now that he is seated at the right hand of God in the heavens, King of kings, Lord of lords, we turn to him in repentance. We turn to him in humility. We turn to him in need meet our needs we turn to him in reverent fear and um he he answers he forgives he answers he restores he brings life where there shouldn't be life that is the god we serve do whatever the foreigner asks of you uh i'll back up here verse 43 then hear from heaven your dwelling place do whatever the foreigner asks of you so that all people of the earth may know your name and fear you and do your own people as do your own people Israel and may know this house I have built bears your name <coughs> excuse me <clears throat> when your people go to war against their enemies whatever you you send them wherever you send them and when they pray to me sorry I, my eyes are bugging me now when slow down when you when your people go to war against their enemies, wherever you send them, and when they pray to the Lord toward the city you have chosen in the temple I have built for your name, then hear from heaven their prayer and their plea and uphold their cause. When they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin. Sound familiar? This is new. The, the God of the Old Testament is still the God of the New Testament. He's the same God. The difference is that the sin has been paid for by the sacrifice of Jesus Christ. Romans 3.23 says, For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. My wife's got it nailed, memorized. All have sinned. And the, the reason we need a Savior, we can't have a Savior if we don't recognize our own sin. Um, for when they sin against you, for there is no one who does not sin and you become angry with them and give them over to their enemies who take them captive to their own lands far away or near. And if they have a change of heart in the land where they are held captive and repent and plead with you in the land of their captors and say, we have sinned, we have done wrong. We have acted wickedly. And if they turn back, if conditional phrase, if they turn back to you with all of their hearts and soul in the land of their enemies who took them captive and pray to you toward the land you gave their ancestors towards the city you have chosen and the temple I've built for your name, then from heaven, your dwelling place, hear their prayer 
and their plea and uphold their cause and forgive your people who have sinned against you and forgive all offenses they have committed against you and cause their captors to show them mercy for they are your people and your inheritance whom you brought out of Egypt out of the iron smelting furnace. Verse 52, we are almost done here. And I see some comments. I will um, I will mention those in a minute here on TikTok. And if you have questions, comments on Facebook as well, please comment. When Solomon had finished all of these prayers and supplications to the Lord, he rose from before the altar of the Lord where he had been kneeling with his hands spread out towards heaven. He stood and blessed the whole assembly of Israel in a loud voice saying, Praise be to the Lord, who has given rest to his people Israel just as he promised. Not one word has failed in all the good promises he gave through his servant Moses. May the Lord our God be with us as he was with our ancestors. May he never leave us nor forsake us. Huh, that verse sounds familiar. Um, I will never leave you nor forsake you. That's what Jesus said. All of scripture points to Jesus Christ, all of it. May he turn our hearts to him, to walk in obedience to him, and keep the commands, decrees, and laws he gave our ancestors. And may these words of mine, which I have prayed before the Lord, be near to the, be, be near to the Lord our God day and night, and he may uphold the cause of his servants and the cause of his people Israel according to each day's need. It sounds like, give us this day our daily bread. So that all the peoples of the earth may know that the Lord is God and that there is no other. And may your hearts be fully committed to the Lord our God to live by his decrees and obey his commands at this time time. May your hearts be fully committed. This is a lot of what Paul and Peter talks about, that he talks about um, coming back on in your heart, your whole heart. Love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your strength. You know, um, seek first the kingdom of God and all things will be added unto you. How many? We got five more verses here or so. The dedication of the temple. Then the king and all Israel, verse 62, were in first Kings 8. Verse 62, then the king and all of Israel with him offered sacrifices before the Lord. Thank you, Jesus, for being our sacrifice now. Solomon offered a sacrifice of fellowship offerings to the Lord, 22,000 cattle and 120,000 sheep and goats. So the king and all Israelites dedicated the temple to the Lord. On the same day, the king consecrated the middle part of the courtyard in front of the temple of the Lord. And there he offered burnt offerings, grain offerings, and the fat of the fellowship offerings. Because the bronze altar that stood before the Lord was too small to hold the burnt offerings, the grain offering and the fat of the fellowship offerings. So Solomon observed the festival at that time and all Israel with him, a vast assembly, people from Labo Hamath to the Wadi of Egypt, they celebrated it before the Lord our God for seven days and seven days more, 14 days in all. On the following day, he sent the people away. They blessed the king and then went home, joyful and glad in their hearts for all the good things the Lord had done for his servant David and his people Israel. We did it. First Kings chapter eight. That's it. Solomon builds the temple. It's finished. They now dedicate it. God shows up in a cloud. There's prayers of blessing. There's prayers of, of confession. There's prayers. There's a covenant made with God that says, we're going to turn to you in the bad. We're going to turn to you in the good. We're going to keep turning to you and we want to know you. And that is an example of for us today that we keep turning to Jesus Christ when things are good. We turn to Jesus when things are bad. We turn to Jesus in all things because he is the ultimate sacrifice. They're talking about thousands of animals. and But all sin was paid for in one sacrifice of Jesus Christ. And we now turn to him. And if you have never done that or you have questions, I would love to talk to you more about that. It really is as easy as ABC. We admit that we are sinners in need of a Savior. 
We believe that Jesus paid the price for our sin on the cross, that he died and rose again, and we choose to commit our lives to him today, and that's where the transformation begins to to happen. We don't we don't change to get saved. I can't stop sinning on my own. I needed Jesus. I needed his sacrifice, and now he begins to change my life, and I just commit to live for him every day. If you want to make that decision today, let me know. You can email me, danielk at bibleredalong.com with any more questions or visit us at bibleredalong.com. That is it for today. Um, I don't have a lot of time to go into a whole bunch of questions on Facebook, but let's take a look. How did the people sin in the Bible? Well, that's a great question. They kept they kept sinning. And really the biggest sin that they, they kept doing is they always, they would put other things before God. That's it. And so sometimes we do the same thing. Our own selfish desires, our own wants, our own needs. We put these before following God and it always will lead us to trouble. That's it. Thank you guys for joining on Facebook. We'll do the uh, bumper here. And um, then I will spend a few more minutes on TikTok answering some questions. But that's it for today on Facebook. Thank you. Again, these videos are available Facebook, YouTube. Audio is available on podcast. God bless you guys. We will be back tomorrow. Bible Read Along committed to developing Christ-centered, Bible-based, Spirit-filled believers who love God, love His Word, and love sharing it with others. BibleReadAlong.com